Hi everyone, Kate back with my uh, belated Victober 2018 edition of my five star TBR predictions. And I have a lot on this list. I have quite a lot, but I'm going to be a lot more free with the DNFing if I'm not enjoying them and just hope for the best and that if I am enjoying them, I'm just going to kind of schedule everything out through the year, taking a break, I'm pretty sure in November, just because there's so many books I want to get to, but I think I'll start up uh, working on these in December and I'm really, really looking forward to it. Uh, so first on the list is one that was on my October TBR this year, didn't get to it, so I want to ensure that I will, and that is A Burglary by Amy Dillwyn. I was really wanting to get to some Amy Dillwyn. I know um, Charlotte from Tired Mama Tries to Read uh, was really disappointed in Jill by Amy Dillwyn over Victober, and so I wanted to, you know, hopefully have one to recommend to her that I enjoyed. Um, she also wasn't really impressed by the prose, so I'm very curious going into this if I'll, you know, think what I'll think of it. But I definitely want to be reading um, more Welsh literature, so I definitely want to get to this sooner rather than later. And it's just supposed to be very humorous. It starts out where something is stolen in a really small town and kind of the repercussions of that over the course, I think, of a year. Uh, next on the list, and this is mostly due to my friend Becky, um, her, she's on Instagram as alias Twiggy, but she also is one of the three lovely ladies who, um, does the live show we do, uh, typically once a month called Talking Amongst Ourselves. Anyhow, and that is Dracula by Bram Stoker. This is definitely not my typical book. Um, I'm very intimidated, but I know that Becky has kind of the same tolerance for scary things that I do. And so I think I can, I think I'm brave enough <laughs> to try Dracula. And um, if I wasn't, you know, kind of motivated enough to read it already, Jess from uh, on Bookstagram, Dickens and Docs uh, had a really just amazing review she put up of Dracula and made me so intrigued and think it had a lot of literary merit to it. So I definitely, um, I'm really looking forward to it now and I want to get to it. And plus a nice thing about Dracula is I think I will most definitely be able to access an audiobook, and I think it would make a really good atmospheric audiobook. Um, an author that I keep meaning to get to every Victober and don't, so I'm adding him to my, uh, you know, my predictions list, and that is Joseph Conrad's The Heart of Darkness. Uh, this is really um, kind of <clears throat> dealing a lot with colonialization, and it's traveling uh, to foreign lands, you know, far away from England. So I think that will be some nice variety in a Victorian novel to have, um, you know, just this really unusual location. And I'm really looking forward to trying this out. It's not that long either. And I'm pretty sure I can read this via audiobook as well. Another author that I keep meaning to get to at Victober and don't is George Gissing. So I have added The Odd Women by George Gissing to the list. Katie from Books and Things has highly recommended uh, George Gissing. I don't know really much about this book. I don't know how much, um, I'll like his writing style, but I really just want to try him out to see what I think. And uh, I think a lot of it is just going to deal with kind of women and their role in society at large. Next on the list is Lady Anna by Anthony Trollope. And I do really enjoy Trollope's Barsetshire Chronicles. And Lady Anna is basically dealing with a woman who I think after the death of her parents is... Oh... Ah, uh, see, now I could be totally wrong, but I think it's basically her trying to prove that she should get an inheritance, that she is legitimate, or that her children should. And I can't remember which one it is. I know that's ridiculous, but either way, it sounded like an intriguing plot when I did read about it, even though I'm not able to really tell you much about it. Um, so yes. Then next on the list is The Heir of Redcliffe by Charlotte M. Young. And this was one that I already wanted to get to because it's mentioned in Little Women. Uh, Joe March is found uh, crying and eating apples and reading The Heir of Redcliffe. <laughs> so that already intrigued me. But then Sean um, from Sean the Book Maniac read it this Victober and utterly loved it. And I also found out um, from that video that... Uh, Charlotte uh, M. Young was Barbara Pym's favorite author, so I would really definitely love to read her now. 
So it's definitely on the list. It seems like a, a really good winter read. Uh, next on the list is Silas Marner by George Eliot. I definitely want to get to more George Eliot, uh, even though the last one I read, uh, The Mill on the Floss, I really, it's not one of my favorite books at all. And uh, so I want to find another one to like. And Silas Marner is really short. Uh, it's less of an investment. And I've heard uh, people who do like it just say it's a really like sweet and charming Victorian novel. And it involves, I think, an older man who doesn't have any children who kind of takes in a little boy. And it just seems like it's a very warm, uh, warm one. Uh, the next on the list is Kidnapped by Robert Louis Stevenson. And this is another that uh, Becky has made me want to read. It's a really good adventure story. She said it's full of plot. And um, even though, you know, there may not be as much character development, it's just a little over 200 pages. And I haven't read as many you know, children's stories, uh, even or more. This is, I think, maybe a little bit more for teenagers. But anyhow, and it's set in Scotland. And uh, I really don't know barely anything about the plot, except I'm assuming from the title that someone is kidnapped. Uh, but yeah, I thought it'd be nice to kind of incorporate more adventure uh, stories into my Victorian reading. And it's one I want to get to. Next on the list is Henry Dunbar by Mary Elizabeth Braddon. This is one that I found out about from Victorian Secret Publishers, and they argued that it is a better book than Lady Audley's Secret. So I was definitely intrigued, and I think it's just about Henry Dunbar, who is a very immoral character, and uh, this makes for a good sensation novel. <laughs> so I uh, am looking forward to investigating that one, and I think I'll just do the ebook of that uh, in case I don't like it, you know, before I have a physical book taking up space in my house. Uh, another shorter Victorian novel I would like to try is Kim by Rudyard Kipling. Emma from A Bookish Princess made Kim sound like a really, really excellent book. And uh, she read it last year and just really made me want to read it. Uh, but it didn't make, you know, my Victober TBR. And then Katie um, from Books and Things read Kim. And as far as I know, she really enjoyed it. So I um, am looking forward to it. It's, you know, a more brief one and I think there is an audiobook available so it's nice just because I have enough physical ones that I'll need to get through so if there are some available via audiobook that's definitely something to help me get through more. Um, next on the list is Cecil or Cecil I can't remember which one by Catherine Gore and this is one that I heard about from Steve Donahue uh, he was talking about his Victober TBR, yeah, from this year. And uh, this is one that's just supposed to be really, really amusing. I think he's quite uh, uh, just, he makes for a really interesting protagonist. And I really wanted to read it just from the ways that Steve talked about it. So I added it to my list. Uh, next on the list, the 18th is one that is a favor of my husband. And that is The White Company uh, by Arthur Conan Doyle. I have read uh, two Sherlock Holmes novels and uh, a, a smattering of the short stories. I think maybe uh, around 10 of the short stories. So I definitely enjoy them, but it's just not my favorite as far as mysteries go. Um, and I know that just my husband really loves this book and he owns a beautiful copy with illustrations. So that could be a treat to get through and get to see the really nice pictures and kind of take my time and really enjoy that one since there's such a beautiful addition to look at. And going in blind to this one, I think it involves King Arthur. And that's really about all that I know. So I know there's, um, a fair amount of variety in the different Arthurian stories. So I'll be very curious, the one that, that I find. Uh, next is The Cloister and the Hearth uh, by Charles Reed. And this is one that uh, it takes place in medieval times. And I know on Goodreads, there were a couple Goodreads friends that I had that had rated this like four or five stars. Um, and I think this would be a great winter read. I think actually I'm excited enough about this one. I will pick it up in December, kind of make my way through it throughout the month uh, with the ebook. And like I said, I really don't know much about the plot in this one, but a medieval setting Victorian novel really intrigued me. So I added it to my list. Um, next is Heart's Ease. This is another one by Charlotte, uh, Charlotte M. Young. And I added this because a subscriber told me 
about this that it is her retelling of Pride and Prejudice. So I would love to see a Victorian retelling of Pride and Prejudice. I know a lot of people talk about North and South, but I don't think Elizabeth Gaskell necessarily called it a retelling of Pride and Prejudice. And I'm pretty sure this is one that she said was a retelling. So I think first I'll do The Heir of Redcliffe. I don't know why. I just have decided that's the first one I want to get to and then move on to Heart's Ease. But I know Charlotte Mary Young has a lot of a lot of books out there. Um, so hopefully she could be a new favorite author. Next on the list, I think through all of my searching on Goodreads, maybe I found out about this one. It is called The Romance of a Shop. And I don't even have, this is ridiculous, I don't even have the author written here. Um, but I heard it compared to Little Women, but maybe a bit bleaker. But I know it's just about uh, a group of sisters and suffering through poverty and kind of industrialization comes into play. All of that just sounds like something I would be interested in. So definitely looking forward to trying that one out. Then one that I have scheduled as the um, book club, the Victorian book club read for January, which I'm really thrilled that we're going to be reading it is The Big Bow Mystery by Israel Zangwill. This is another one that a subscriber told me about. And I'm sorry, I can't remember um, your name. I get so many recommendations. So thank you to whoever did recommend it. Uh, and this is basically one of the first closed door mysteries. It is right around 200 pages. It just sounds very intriguing. It sounds like you're going to follow different detectives as they try to figure out this locked door mystery. And yeah, it just sounds like something I have to read as such a mystery lover. And then lastly on the list is one that uh, is on my nonfiction November TBR. I do have a lot that I'm reading this month, so I'm not sure if I'll get to it this month, but it is 1,000 Miles Up the, Ni the Nile by Amelia B. Edwards. And this is just a, a travel memoir of this amazing woman who traveled the world. And uh, this is her travels throughout Egypt. And I have the ebook, so hopefully I will get to it. And yes, I'm just I'm really looking forward to that kind of some Victorian nonfiction. So that is my whopping 2018 Victober five-star TBR prediction list. And I will let you know how it goes next Victober when I do my uh, reaction video. I hope you guys are having a lovely day and I'll see you for another video soon. Bye.